You know what else is not stealing? Putting an extra bike lock on a stranger's bike. <laughs> it's insane that bike locks are legal, that they're just available to the public. You have any idea the amount of power that you wield with your imagination and a bike lock? There's so many things. Like, you could just walk past the Baskin Robbins and be like, you're closed. <laughs> it is so arbitrary what we need permission to buy and what we don't. You have to show photo ID in a hobby shop to buy paint. Yet all of us here are just one Amazon click away from buying orange cones and making traffic go wherever we want. <laughs> I don't like buying milk, right? They don't sell any other product that way. You grab a bag of marshmallows off the shelf, all the other marshmallows don't come at you. <laughs> Milk, the heaviest item in the store. They sell on a ramp that's aimed at your face. I mean, pull one gallon off, seven others slam forward. It's 2%, you wanted non-fat, but now you can't put it back. I discovered though, you push those other milks hard enough, they disappear. In the healthy grocery stores, I, I never buy anything from that aisle of barrels, right? I just don't like how accessible it is to like bare hands or the air. Here's what I do though, I go up to the most expensive granola and I scoop it into the cheapest one. I'm the Robin Hood of Whole Foods. very different. We come from different backgrounds. Like, I came from a normal family, you know? <laughs> she, she just came from, like, a hippy-dippy family, you know? Her, her dad's an actual hippie. Her mom's a holistic nurse. And I just, if, first of all, if you don't know what holistic medicine is, it's basically like, remember when you were little and you'd play house, you know? And you'd, like, you'd pretend you had to go to the doctor, but you're a kid, so you don't have medical equipment, so you just kind of use sticks and rocks and stuff, you know? <laughs> That's holistic medicine. That's... Here's, a, here's a better example. When I was single, before I met my wife, I used to use Irish Spring, okay? It's good soap, I like it. That was my soap. And then I met my wife, we got married, we move in together. She sees my soap in the shower one day, and she freaks out, she's like, whoa, 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 what, what is this? Come here, what is this? What is that? Are you kidding me? That, that has aluminum in it, that's terrible. That has aluminum in it. I'm like, I'm like uh, I, I, I didn't see any. She's like, you cannot use that, you can't use that. Here, you gotta use this weird misshapen oatmeal rock I bought from a homeless person at the farmer's market. what your body needs. It's the good stuff. All right, whatever. Hey, I'm a married guy. I don't want to make waves. I know how it goes, right? So I'm using her soap, okay? Uh, first of all, it hurts because there's pebbles in it. I don't know who's running quality control at the Hippy Dippy Soap Factory, but I think they're asleep at the wheels. There's a lot of junk going down that line. No one's picking out. I'm using her soap one day, I'm washing myself, I cut my leg. I literally cut my leg, I look down, there's a stick in the soap. You ever cut yourself soaping, anyone? It's very frustrating. I never found a stick in my Irish spring, okay? But that's kind of a big selling point when I, when I buy soap, no sticks. Mm. Look at that one. 
I just don't get this hippy dippy movement we're all moving towards there. You know, oh, you shouldn't, you don't, you shouldn't wash yourself with anything and, unless you found it on the ground in the woods. <laughs> That's how you know it's good soap. I used to go to Target and I'd buy a year supply of Irish Spring and it would cost me, I think, what? I don't know, $11? <laughs> Comes in a box, made in a factory, says soap on the side somewhere so you know what you're buying. And meanwhile, my wife's buying soap from gypsies <laughs> made out of oatmeal and sticks, right? The packaging is rope. Good quality control right there. <laughs> the label is just a ripped off piece of scratch paper someone hand wrote, nature's chunk of crap. $18. <laughs> okay. So anyways, the girl, the girl I'm with, um, she, uh, her, uh, her family likes to go to Jersey Shore every year. I told you, I live in Boston, so she like, her family likes to go to Jersey Shore. It's a big vacation destination. We all go to LBI, Long Beach Island. It's crazy. Beach time, it's, it's, everybody's on the beach. So I thought it was going to be nuts. I thought it was going to be like, whoa, it's going to be a party. No. Okay, here's what happens. Uh, they, we, we go rent this house for a week, and whole family, and they wake up at like six in the morning, right? And they drag out all the stuff out of the house and they bring it to the beach. Couches, chairs, cans of food, sandwiches, books. Her mom's like, you got a book, you're going to need a book, honey. You got a book, you're going to need a book, Corey. You got a book, you're going to really need a book. You got a book. I was like, why do I need a book? She said, because we're going to be here all day. I had no idea they were all just going to sit on the beach and cook in the sun. And then they all just flip like little rotisserie chickens and they just keep going. And at one point, our mom looked at me. She was like, are you having a good time, honey? I was like, yeah, I'm having a good time because I'm respectful. But I wasn't having a good time. I wanted to be like, what do you want me to do? Lay on my back and tan the bottoms of my hands and my feet? I'm tan already. How long are we going to stay here? Her dad, by the third day, her dad's always peeling from his forehead. He's peeling from his nose. He's like, I don't know how I got burned this year. I'm like, really? You don't know how you got burned this year? What happened? Did the sun trick you this year? Is that what happened? <laughs> Did it somehow hide behind the moon and then it just popped out like, burn, baby, burn! <laughs> Jump back behind the moon and hid? What do you mean? <laughs> Her brother always takes his little pasty arm and he puts it by next to my arm, right? Like the second day, he's like, look at me, bro. I'm almost as dark as you. I'm as dark as you. <laughs> You know how scared you would be if you woke up one morning and just the right side of your face was my complexion as a white? You'd be like, oh, ah! I'm turning into a panda. Ah! You'd be so scared. One of the days I'm sitting there with everybody, I said, give me the 50. Putting on the sunblock, I said, give me the 50. And my girl, I'm putting on the 50, whatever. He starts laughing, the brother starts laughing. He's like, why are you putting on sunscreen? I'm like, why are you laughing? He goes, because you're putting on sunblock. I was like, yeah, why are you laughing? He goes, because you don't need it. I was like, yes, I do need it. He was like, why? I said, because I'm made out of meat, that's why. What do you mean, why? This is skin, what are you thinking? What do you mean, why? He's like, relax, I just didn't think you needed it. I thought I grew up thinking black people didn't need sunscreen. I was like, that's the thing you grew up learning? He was like, yeah, that's what I thought. I didn't know. Just assimilated into my brain somehow. I'm not racist, clearly. I'm hanging out with you right now, so. He was like, I didn't know. You know what's messed up as I look at your faces? I feel like you're looking at me like, I didn't think you needed it either. That's a problem. Black people need sunscreen. What is wrong with you? What do you think happened to Morgan Freeman's face? <laughs> All those chocolate chips on his face, that's from the sun. That's not genetic, he was in the cell with no sunscreen. Should've put a little sunscreen on my face. Another time. So my wife and I, uh, we talk probably a lot about mostly kid stuff. Right, cause we have kids in the house, and kids, they take up, they take up a lot. <laughs> Clap if you have children. You have children? <laughs> kids take up a lot. Okay? We have two 
boys. Okay, we have a 10-year-old and a three-year-old, and I hate to have to say it, but technically, to the 10-year-old, I'm his stepdad. Right? And I hate to have to make a, a distinction, because that's not how we live at my house. All right? But I've been there since he was four. And a buddy of mine, he goes, yeah, well, you know, do you treat him like he's really your kid? And I go, yeah, I've been there since he was four. You know, I'm the one who taught this kid how to pee standing up. <laughs> All right. I taught him my morals. I taught him when your mom serves you breakfast, first thing you do is say thank you. Right? Those are my morals. And I pay his rent. That's how I, if I pay your rent, you're my son. That's the rules. It works. He's my buddy. We play Xbox together. My friend's like, yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, play Xbox. I'm just saying, you know, uh, what if there's a fire? Then how important is he? And I was like, dude, I still gotta face my wife after the fire. I can't walk up to her holding the Xbox like, woo, that was close. <laughs> we made it. What? No, he was right behind me. Oh no. That's terrible. Because he had the other controller. No, no. I love this dude. He's my buddy. He's my little buddy. He's my sidekick, right? And I'll tell you this, okay? So there's two boys, have different dads. My wife is Caucasian. That means white. <laughs> the school system here. So. Her first husband, also black. I tell you that, so now you know exactly what the kids look like, because we only make one basic floor model. <laughs> you feel bad, but you know exactly what they look like. Cocoa skin, curly hair. So when the 10 year old, he was little, I would take him with me to the store all the time. This used to happen all the time. Usually girls department stores would go, oh my goodness, he looks just like you. I totally see it, father and son, he looks just like you. He doesn't look like me at all. They're not going by facial features, they're going by a color chart. He's in between this color and this color. That's not how it works. He looks exactly like his dad, like so much so, sometimes when I talk to him, I just punch him in the mouth. <laughs> told you not to disrespect, oh, it's you, buddy, it's you, buddy, it's, buddy, I told you not to make that face, buddy, don't make, your mom's coming, get up, 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 get up. He was on the floor when I got here. He was, he's playing lay down. Now listen, I'm telling you this because this is a 100% true story. I'm not making this up, okay? This is this kid's background. He's four years old. It happened three times in one day. People are like, oh, you look just like each other. He's starting to get it, four years old. We're leaving Toys R Us. Happened three times in one setting. He's leaving, he looks at me, he goes, hey, uh, um, hey Warren, um, how, come, how come people keep thinking you're my dad? And I go, I don't know, buddy, probably, probably because we're both black. And he says, I'm not black. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what, uh, what are you, buddy? And he goes, I'm white. And I go, y you are white, but you are also black. Straight face, he goes, what am I black? And I said, every other weekend. <laughs> and alternating holidays. <laughs> it's gonna be a dark Easter, buddy. <laughs> but it's gonna be a white Christmas! <laughs> Best of both worlds, buddy. Best of both worlds. Actually, it's, uh, it's coming up on my, uh, on my anniversary. October will be my anniversary. Um, October, I was, uh, oh man, seven, six, six years ago. Six years ago in October, uh, this year, October will be six years. Uh, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. Uh, I had the cancer removed. Uh, six year will be my six year anniversary in October, being done with it. And, uh, thank you. 
I had, I had to lose the weight uh, six years ago. I was about 300, 343 pounds. Holy crap. I was 300, 343 pounds. Now I'm at 270, 274, 273 pounds. <laughs> trying to get down, trying to get it out. And I'm telling you something, fellas, we need to be more aware. We do. We need to be more aware of, 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 of our, I know a lot of guys think they Superman. And that's what I like to do. When I do my shows, I like to talk to the fellas and be like, you know what, we need to get our awareness up. Because I'll give you all a real number. Seven out of 10 guys, 70% of guys will die from either prostate, colon, or testicular cancer. That's real, 70% of us. Because we don't have no awareness. We don't say nothing. We keep it in. We Superman. We don't have to say nothing. I know most men will stand in a crooked position because something hurts. That's in this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You go to work, you see Phil, Phil standing like this. You walk past Phil, you're like, Phil, what's wrong? Nothing, it'll go away, leave me alone. <laughs> and fellas, do we help Phil? No, we don't help Phil. We make fun of Phil the whole night. Every time we see Phil, hey, Phil. <laughs> we need to stop. Phil needs to see a doctor, fellas. We need to be aware, we need to be, we need to get our awareness up like the ladies. Ladies, your awareness is fantastic, fantastic. If there's something wrong in the female world, you will let everybody know. <laughs> you will stop people. Do you know what today is? But that's good, that's fantastic. You would never let your best friend stand there crooked. Your best friend is crooked, you'd be like, girl, what's wrong with you? What's this? Straighten yourself up, fix yourself up. That's what we need to do, fellas, we need to be like that. Don't go through what I went through. Don't wait till the last minute before you gotta go see your doctor. If it's time to go see your doctor, go see your doctor. Don't go through what I went through, because they did a lot of stuff back here. <laughs> they did, but I'm glad they got it out. I'm glad it, it was done. I'm, after all my surgeries, after everything was done, after all of that, my recovery, I have a new respect for you ladies now. I do, because I had to be y'all for a little bit. For real, when I was going through my recovery from the, from the surgeries, I was still a little, I was still bleeding in the back side, so I had to wear maxi pads for about two weeks. It's not funny. I didn't even know they had a sticky side. I didn't. I didn't know how they worked. Mine just moved around every time I walked. I walked around like, nah, this is not right. This is not right. This is why they always mad. No, I get it now, uh-uh, uh-huh. I had to call my sister, but I was like, how do you keep these things still? She was like, did you peel it? I'm like, did I peel what? She was like, that little piece of paper, what did you think that was? I said, I thought it was an air freshener. I don't know how these work. She was like, no, you idiot. You peel it, stick it, then you're good. So I did. And it was fantastic. <laughs> After that, I was like, okay, there it is, there it is. I was giving random ladies high fives. Stay free, yeah. 